Over Easter weekend, I had the chance to visit uh, Portland's very first uh, gaming expo, Betacon. Was it a great, enthusiastic mini packs, or is it less fun than a beta fish? Find out next on the Convention Report. Good morning, everybody. My name is Michael Fox. Welcome to uh, my convention report of Betacon 2017, or Betacon 1. I kept calling it two different things. I'm, I'm just assuming it's Betacon 2017, because they've already announced like they're going to do a second one. Um, so I was somewhat particularly, my friend and I, my buddy Andy, and my wife and everybody were somewhat particularly, I cannot talk. Particularly. That's the word. Um, a little hard on this convention. <laughs> And uh, snobs. we we are convention snobs in a sense. Andy, what do you think of Betacon? Uh, Betacon's great. It's arguably the best experience of my life. And I like, I really got to give credit where credit is due because I actually had some fun at this convention. Um, it was super small. It was a little bit smaller. I was expecting it to be small. It was too small for the um, But I, I felt. I felt I got what I technically expected um, due to the the price of tickets and and so on and so forth. Um, and I I'm trying to experiment with like some fill light. I bought this little light and it's it's it seems like it's focus. I'm having a focusing issue, so I apologize for that. Um, but it makes it easier to record in the daytime because I have all this light behind me and, and everything. So anyway, back on topic. So. Um, it was a decent first convention, I thought, like, um, it definitely, like, they post on their Facebook, um, they post on their Facebook basically saying, yeah, we know we have room to grow, we have a lot of room to grow, um, and there's, like, they really advertised it a lot with, like, oh, we have all these sponsors, and I ex really expected those sponsors to have booths, um, like, Intel was a big sponsor, and, and there were some, o there were, like, tons of Oculus Rifts, and so people could try those out, which was pretty cool, but at the same time, like, Intel themselves didn't actually seem to be there, um, <laughs> it was... I don't want it and you can't make me! <laughs> anyway, so... Uh, I was being harsh on this convention, and like um, a couple months ago, I did an announcement video talking about, "Hey, there's this brand new convention in town. You guys should all go to it." Uh, somebody commented on that yesterday, and I, I think they may have deleted their comment. I'm not sure, but they're like, "I went to this yesterday. Fucking boring." <laughs> like, ah. Yeah. Oh. How about that cheese? Oh. I don't like this convention. It wasn't that bad. Um, I honestly, like, there were some really cool games I got to play that um, I was excited for. And, I mean, for 15, regular tickets were only 15 bucks. So, it's not, like, it wasn't, it wasn't expensive. So, it was, it was worth $15. Um, my wife and I and my buddy Andy all got VIP tickets, which were $30. And the one, the one complaint I have about the VIP tickets uh, would be, like, like, oh, you get this goodie bag, and you get a poster, and you get this VIP lounge. So the VIP lounge was actually, it wasn't, like, super fantastic, but it had some couches, which allowed, uh, I had my, allowed my family and I to sit for a bit, which, in a comfortable seat, which was really nice. Um, and only VIP people had access to this one VR game that I got to play, which was really cool. Um, but the, the swag bag was kind of like, eh, because... Uh, well, it was the same one. Well, regular attendees didn't get the swag bag. Um, but, like, 90% of the stuff inside the swag bag, like, you could go get from one of the booths for free. Like, um, the only thing that was different was the poster. So I'm going to show off the poster first. This was... This was the poster. Um, it's pretty cool. Like, one thing I really liked about Betacon is I really like... Um, their artwork, like the the little mascot and stuff, I really, I really dig in that. Like it's, I don't know, it's just it's very unique. I I like that a lot. Um, and swag bag. 
So here's the swag bags. Um, also, my, my complaint with conventions in the past is, like, I enjoy badges. I don't like these, like, because I'm just going to throw this away. Like, there's no souvenir badge to keep. Um, but this is pretty much filled with advertisements, which, uh, meh. Like, I got an Art Institute pen. Uh, my, my buddy, my buddy, uh, my buddy Andy kept calling it Art Institute of Portland Con, which is kind of funny. Um, but there was, so there was this sticker, um, and so the company that made, that made all the decals and made the shirts for the, the convention, um, workers, um, they had pretty much all these stickers that were in the goodie bag, like, out for free, so, like, it was, it was somewhat pointless. Um, Portland Retro Gaming advertisement is in there, um, this geek girl stuff, she had some cool stuff, she had, like, 3D printed, um, like Harry Potter magic wands, different things like that. I didn't see those. Uh, you didn't see those? The Pig Squad, Portland Indie Game Squad, uh, they were there. They had, this is where I saw most of the cool games that I really, really enjoyed. Um, and then there's, like, King Joe. Uh, basically it's, it's like an app, like, offer up, but it only specifically video games. Uh, and then, this was a sticker nobody else, a sticker sheet nobody else got. It was all the cool artwork from, like, just the Betacon artwork. Like, I don't know why I like it so much. I can't, it reminds me a little bit of Pikmin, but, like, some, something else mixed into it. I'm not, I don't know. Uh, so as far as other swag I got, uh, I, we won, we won, actually my son won this, one of these bags. My wife won one as well. Uh, from the KomoriCon booth, uh, and then I won from the KomoriCon booth. I won this this cat, <laughs> this cat uh, sushi keychain. It's kind of funny. There's other ones you can get. There's some other ones you can get, which are really like they're all kind of weird looking. Tamago, Tamago, like <laughs> they're weird. They're really weird. Um, that, that same decal, like, the decal people, they were giving away Betacon keychains, so I, I snagged one of these Betacon keychains. I really wanted, I actually wanted a Betacon shirt, even though I wasn't super impressed, uh, with the convention. I really wanted a Betacon shirt, um, but they weren't selling them. But Potter Decals is the one that made all the stickers, as, as far as at least the way I understood it, they made all the stickers and, um, made the t-shirts. Uh. Uh, so there was a big company that does 3D printing as well, um, and uh, like I thought I would show off their uh, their Jesus Christ their business cards, uh, which are pretty cool. They're they're 3D printed uh, business cards, which I thought I just thought was really neat. Um, I grabbed some other stickers and stuff from that Potter decal place. They had a cool business card as well. It's also a sticker. Um, what is this garbage? I don't even remember. Um, so other than that, onto the games. Onto the games we got to play. So uh, I'm gonna switch screens here. One of the games I was most impressed with was uh, this game called Res Please. Uh, it's a really cool co-op game where basically sometimes you have to use the other player to get across obstacles, different things like that. Um, Hopefully this isn't like super loud. Um, but people die, and then you're, the other player will just res them up, and it's it's really brutal and really fun. Um, actually, it turns out they actually have a demo of it on their website, which um, I would encourage everybody to go try out. I had this was probably one of my favorite things um, from from BetaCon actually getting to play this game, and then. Um, I'm going to do a video on the actual demo of it. They did say, like, nothing's even close to being done, basically. Uh, that they have a Kickstarter that's going to be starting soon. Something I, like, this might be the first Kickstarter that I actually throw some money onto and actually back. So, um, it's pretty cool. Uh, da, 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 switching, um, I also had the chance, uh, in the, the VIP area, I had a chance to play this really cool Oculus Rift game that was, um, you're, like, in this... You're like in this futuristic garage, maybe on a spaceship or something, but there's, um, they have you turn on this robot that has like a pop lid, and he kind of looks like Wally, uh, in a sense, but he like, he like freaks out, gets scared, and then like runs away. 
um, which I thought it was so cool and so interactive because like, oh, he ran away, and then I saw him hiding, and I like, I waved to him, like just not, like I didn't expect anything to happen, but he responded and waved back, um, and then he ran up to me and started handing me different, uh, different discs that I could put into this computer, and they would, they basically materialize some type of thing, like there was a gun or some, some like rocket ships you could grab and then pull the, pull the string on, and they would launch off. Uh, just a bunch of different really cool things, and, like, this is the only second time I've played VR, and this one I had a really good time with. The last one was just, like, a basketball game that I just, I was like, eh, okay, it's a basketball, that's cool. Uh, this one I had a lot of fun with. I really dug that a lot, and there was also another game called, uh, uh, God, what was the name of this, what was the name of this game? I forget. Oh, so it was, a, it was a game called Sergeant, Sad, Sar, Sergeant Saturn, um, and it was kind of like a little shooter. Uh, you're basically just running, it's like a running gun, like little action platformer shooter, which uh, I had a lot of fun with as well. Uh, my son and I played basically a, a game that was Pong, but reimagined Pong with like weird little uh, grungy looking characters that would hit the ball back and forth. Um... What else was there? I think that was really about about it for me. Like, like I think had I not had the experience with those, like the Res Please and that VR, that little robot VR game, like I would have been pretty disappointed in Betacon. Um, but I discovered both of those things, and like I, I felt like those were like really super enjoyable. Uh, the con definitely has room to grow. Um, like I had fun. But it's definitely got some room to grow, in my opinion. I think in everybody's opinion. Uh, but it was a it was a really cool first attempt. Uh, you walked I, through the whole con within 45 minutes. Yeah, I mean we really we pretty much walked through the entire thing within 45 minutes. The other the other one big complaint I would have too was like, um, like they had so much more room, but yet some of the booths were so like tightly condensed that it just didn't make any sense. Like. You have all this room, like, spread this stuff out. Like, there's no need for it to be cramped like this, uh, which was, like, a big struggle. They had a lot of presenters and stuff, too, that were talking about different things, um, especially if you're a game, like, a, a video game creator and you're trying to get into the industry. There probably would have been a lot of stuff that interested you, uh, which is not necessarily me. I'm just a... I play games. I don't necessarily like to make them. I like to make videos. Uh, so they have... If they would have had something for that... I think would have been cool is for them to like maybe invite some some local YouTubers. Hint, hint. No, I'm just, but I think that would have been cool to have some actual like some YouTubers that that do do, do let's plays and stuff up there and, and talking about their experience would have been cool as well. Uh, all in all, like I'll look into it next year if it comes around again next April uh, and see what's going on. Uh, I mean, they have to compete with SoccerCon. That's probably one of the reasons why, like, this was so small and kind of empty. Is like, SoccerCon was the same weekend, and a lot of people in Portland just drive up to Seattle for that, which is really easy to do. So, um, maybe have it on a different weekend would be also a, a, a definitely a, a plus idea. Uh, I think that's all I could say, though. Uh, I've been rambling quite a bit in a lot of things, so. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Tell me what you guys thought of Betacon. Did you go to it? Uh, would you go to it again? Did you feel like you got your money's worth? Let me know. Uh, until next time, guys, please be kind to each other, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.